Were you molested? Never, never. In your childhood, you have any memories of anything that you would associate with what you became? No, that's the that's the strange thing. I can't pinpoint any anything. So there was nothing in your childhood? No, no abuse, no physical abuse, no verbal abuse. It was a normal childhood in a good home. Something went awry in my thought life. Uh, I don't know why. There's no single history that causes someone to become a, a serial killer. Many of the individuals who are serial killers, not all of them, but many have had very traumatic uh, early life experiences. Uh, in Mr. Dahmer's case, none of that seemed to be present. Jeffrey's father, Lionel, now in his 80s, wanted to talk to us about the boy he knew. But he only agreed to an on-camera interview if he could wear sunglasses. In his mind, they make him less identifiable. He loved the place that we lived in. and uh, It was a heavily wooded place. He uh, enjoyed his small group of friends. He was raised in a somewhat affluent family. His father had a, a doctoral degree in chemistry. Uh, the family lived on a one and a quarter quiet wooded acres with a pond. While Jeffrey indicated nothing in his childhood could have fueled his desire to kill, according to Lionel and his wife, Sherry, who'd been part of Jeffrey's life since he was 18, there was something that affected him even before he was born. His mother, Joyce, struggled with mental illness and took 27 pills a day when she was pregnant with Jeffrey, including antidepressants, growth hormones, and progesterone. Uh, doctors met with us, and they said those medicines could have affected the fetus. And um, when Jeff was born, the grandparents were not allowed to hold the baby. Joyce didn't want anybody touching the baby or breathing on it. She was afraid of germs. They, they virtually had no contact with Jeff as a baby. In my conversations with Lionel, he told me that in infancy, Joyce herself rarely touched Jeffrey, except to change his diapers or hold him for a photo. There was so much illness with his mother at that time. She was involved with Gestalt therapy at a local mental health center, wandering around in the dark, touching people. Nothing, nothing helped. In the midst of this, Lionel and his first wife, Joyce, have a second child. Jeff noticed that when his younger brother was born, Jeff no longer had fairy tales from his mother, stories read at night, and tucking him in. Jeff felt somewhat left out. We were moving at the time, and he had to leave his favorite kitten behind and going to a new school, being only six years old. He became a little bit more shy, much like I was in my youth. During his adolescence, Dahmer develops a hobby that would raise eyebrows in the years that followed. Were you obsessed with dead animals? Is that true? I was interested in, in taxidermy in high school and experimented with uh, preserving the bones of dogs and things like that. And uh, whether that had anything to do with, with um, the escalation of the crimes, I don't know. He went into further detail in this interview with a forensic psychologist. This uh, beagle that got hit, wanted to see what the insides looked like, so just cut it open. It was already dead. And uh, uh, wanted to do, I guess, something shocking with it, at least. So I took it and and uh, stuck it up on a, on a pole in the neighbor's wooded area. There are numbers of young people who might have those same kinds of interests and don't end up being serial killers. So in retrospect, had I spoken with him as a teenager, uh, I don't know that either he or I would have predicted at that point that he was going to end up being the serial killer he turned out to be. Now, I lived with this young man. He lived in our home. He had his father's intelligence, and on the phone, you could not tell Jeff or Lionel apart. Jeff was always 
very gentle, very kind. In high school, friends begin to notice Jeffrey is becoming a different person. Jeff's behavior began to be so strange that I felt very uncomfortable being with him alone. He liked to act, in his words, crazy. He would just start shrieking, or he would twist himself up in a grotesque way and run with a limp, almost like Quasimodo. And I remember one time asking him why he behaved this way. And he said, I just like to shake people up. I remember when we had our senior pictures taken, he got into a lot of the group photos that he was not a member, the National Honor Society group, whoever was in charge of that in those days, they blacked out his face and it's really creepy. I had a, a classmate who said, years ago, we thought that photo was hilarious and it's not so funny anymore. His brazen behavior continues in the classroom. He was drinking beer. Sometimes he kept in his locker, and I guess he kept beer in his car. Did teachers do anything about it? Did they know about it? I'm sure some teachers knew about it. I remember distinctly one morning sitting in class next to Jeff, who had his cup of scotch, and I said, Jeff, what is that? He just tossed his head back as though it was no issue at all, and he said, it's my medicine. There was a, a collective sense of blinders going up that people didn't notice because they didn't want to notice. According to Dahmer, alcohol was a way to drown his growing dark desires. I started having these obsessive thoughts uh, when I was about uh, 15 and 16, and they got worse and worse. What were your fantasies about? Uh, they were sexual fantasies of control, power, uh, complete dominance. Uh, they became reality. Was there pleasure in that fantasy? There was excitement, uh, fear, pleasure all mixed together. 